All right, guys. Today, we've got a 2018 Ford Edge 2 liter. We're talking about oil changes and sludge in the engine. Let's get into it. All right, so this vehicle's in here for a different problem. Came in here for a running problem. We did a video on it, so we'll put that in the description, link to that in the description. But when we got it apart, the, we noticed something and we wanted to, to show you guys. So we did a video recently on a Land Rover that had roughly 10,000 mile oil change intervals done. It was very sludged up and there were a ton of comments on, there's no way it had 10,000 mile oil services. I and mean, we had the vehicle history on it, but you know, nobody believed it. It wasn't the proper oil. It wasn't done at the right interval. There's no way it sludged up that fast. Okay, so now we're into this one. So let's take a look. This is a 2018 uh, Edge with a two liter in it. And it's got 114,000 miles on it. We've got, we're gonna show the Carfax on it. We've got history all the way back to, I wanna say somewhere in the 50,000, a little over 50,000 mile range, something like that. We'll take a look at it. And it's had oil services done roughly every 7,500 miles. Some of them went like 8,000, some were done a little sooner, but you know, if you kind of average it out, it's roughly 7,500 miles. So we don't know what kind of oil was used in it. I can, we'll go ahead and just say that right up front. I don't know, but it was done at the intervals that was supposed to be done at. Let's come in here and take a look at it. I'm gonna step over here around this. So this isn't horrible, right? And it's kind of hard on, on video to look at that, but, or to, you know, to see it, but there's quite a bit of, you know, build up in here. And there's a lot of grime, you know, here on the, on the camshafts. I'm gonna grab a rag real quick. So there's a lot of grime on those camshafts. There's a lot up here. If we look at the actuators and the outside of the actuators, you know, that's, you know, that's a good bit. So, and the problem with this kind of stuff is it gets throughout the engine. It doesn't just sit on this, on these components and where we see the biggest problems with this and, and why this is becoming more and more of an issue, you know, manufacturers extended out the, the oil change intervals and at the same time, they do variable valve timing with actuators. So we've got solenoids, right? And then the solenoids use oil pressure to go down into the actuator to move this actuator so that they can adjust the cam timing. These things are really, really susceptible to a tiny bit of debris getting in there and binding them up. Now there are screens on the solenoids, okay? But it, I've seen them, I've seen these things bind up with debris. It doesn't take much at all. We've had good luck with, with or some luck, with when we do come in, when they come in here and they have a problem with the actuator, the actuator's binding, we will do an engine flush and we'll go in and we'll, we'll connect to this manually and we'll activate it and try to get that thing going, you know, with the engine flush going in there to try to break it loose. And we've had some luck having that happen, but that just tells you that there's debris inside of it. These things get replaced a lot. They are not inexpensive. That's not what's wrong with this motor, but they are not inexpensive. Um, and it's, you know, it's actually a very expensive repair to do these because, you know, you're basically doing the timing chain when you're doing it. The, the, key to this is if we do our oil change intervals a little more often than the manufacturer says and we use the proper oil so we've been doing 5,000 mile oil service intervals on on your synthetic blend oil and we've been doing 7,500 mile intervals with our um our 7,000 mile intervals i'm sorry with our full synthetic and we're actually thinking about lowering down our full synthetic down to set 5,000 and because we don't really use very much blend anymore. I mean, almost every car we work on has, is using full synthetic. We're thinking about just taking everything to 5,000 miles. It, it's just, it's, it's a little bit of a cost up front. I totally get that. And for you vehicle owners that are watching this video, yeah, it's a little bit more cost up front. There's no question. Man, it's a whole lot cheaper than going in here and doing this. And the problem even with this is when you go in here and you do a major repair, you know, it's kind of like, and I don't, we're related to the medical industry a little bit, I guess. You know, would you rather keep your heart in good shape and not have an issue with your heart? Or would you rather not keep your heart in good shape and then have to be cut open and repaired, right? Well, once you're cut open and repaired, you're never as good as you were originally. So once this thing is taken apart and, and having to be stuff be replaced and there's, and there's 
all this this gunk and sludge and debris in here. We're gonna do everything we can to get this as much of this stuff out as we possibly can. We're gonna flush this engine. You know, we're gonna get it as clean as we possibly can get it. It's never gonna be the way it could have been had it been maintained or, well, it was maintained to the manufacturer spec, but had it been more aggressively maintained, we wouldn't be having the issues that we have with this vehicle right now. I don't even know how much this ticket is, but it's several thousand dollars to do that. That takes a whole lot of oil changes, you know, doing them, doing them 2,000 miles more often. That takes a whole lot of them to add up to the, what this is costing. So for us, I just think that's something we're gonna actually go to. Uh, and I just think it's gonna save our clients money. And that's what we always try to do here is we try to come up with ways to save our clients money in the long run. Sometimes that costs a little bit in the short term, but you know, we, we weigh out you know the pros and cons of things and i think in this one that's why we're putting this video out you know to kind of help all you guys out there that are doing this that are kind of thinking the same way is are other people running into this yeah i think everybody's running into this so we're going to take a look at the carfax we're going to show this the intervals on this thing so that we don't have people going there's no way there's no way all we can do is go by the data we got let's take a look at that so here's the carfax report we went at, we bought the carfax report so we could try to get as, as complete of a um picture as we possibly could the vehicle was a lease vehicle. So the first owner was a lease and they got to 43,935 when they, when they uh, traded it back in. There is no history before that as far as any maintenance history. So um, we're only thing we can, we can think is that the services were done as a lease program where they said, bring it back in and we'll do the services. I have no explanation. Clearly something, um, oil services were done in the first, you know, under a lease vehicle in the first 40 something thousand miles. So we start off with the vehicle being bought at 43,958. And then it had some tires and things put on it. The, um, and then the oil service done at 53. So more than likely what happened was the dealership probably changed the oil in it before they sold it because that would have been about right. And then it would have been 10,000 miles later, they did the oil service. So they did go 10,000 on the first one, 9, right? 9,000. Yeah, 9,000 ish. So yeah, that's a big difference, 9,000. So we did the math on this and the average was 8,150 8, miles in between the oil services. They were a little bit erratic. If that's so, using, that's using the lease, assuming they were doing it at 7,500 mile intervals recommended on the lease part of on the, the lease yes okay so we assume 7500 uh on the lease and because that we did look this vehicle up and 7500 is the recommended interval so we got 53096 we got 63 62 389 then we got so that's roughly what 9000 8000 something 9000 there we got 675 70500 so again 8000 76,610. So now we're at about 6,000. 82, another 6,000. 90. So now we're at 8,000 again. All at the Ford. All at Ford. All at Ford. All, every one of them, this was done at a Ford dealership. So, you know, I'm assuming the correct oil was put in it. Yeah. So then we got 100. So I want to say that was what, 90, 90 to 100. So just under, just under 10,000 on that one. And then we got 110. That was this last one was done at take five at, at an oil service place. Yeah. So 10,000 miles on that. 10,000 on that one. So, and here's the thing, right? So, if, and I, we all know this, all, all of us that, that do this for a living know this. If you tell somebody a 5,000 mile oil service, there are people that are just dead on that. They want to get in there. If it's, if it's within, you know, 100 miles of that, before that, they're getting nervous. And they want to get it in. Some, most people, you know, 5,000 is a recommendation, right? 5,000 is a, ah, you know, it's a ballpark. So you recommend 5,000 all of a sudden at six, 6,500, which is just, just, just the way it is, right? So we have to calculate that into our equation. If, if we tell them 7,500, and here's perfect proof, 7,500, and we're all over the place. We're doing six sometimes, a couple of times we did six, most of the time we did eight, then sometimes we did 10. So. You know, it's one of those things that we have to think about when we're doing this. But the whole point of this video is this vehicle was maintained at an average rate of 8,150 miles. So 
what I would consider if you tell somebody 7,500 miles, that I would 100% consider 8,100 miles, 8,200 miles to be about where the average would be. Some people are going to go over. So we, you know, that service being done, we know that it went to the dealership for all these services. Uh, I'm sure it went to the dealership for all the services at under lease. And then all of these services after that, until the very last one, which was just 4,000 miles ago, it went to the dealership. So we can say that, yeah, we could say, oh, well, the old dealership might not have used the right oil. It does happen, but, uh, you know, we, we can try to pick this thing apart without, the only way we can know 100% is if we brought a vehicle in here with zero miles on it, started it, and did the oil changes at 10,000 miles using the right oil, then we can do that. But in the real world, this is what we've got to deal with. This thing's got sludge in it. The oil services were done about where the, where the public does oil services, the majority of public. I know there's a lot of you out there that are like, no, I do my services right on the money. And man, you do that because your vehicle, your vehicle will last without needing major work on it for a long time. But this is, this is a perfect example of what vehicles, how vehicles get treated and how they get serviced. And this is the kind of, kind of problems that we run into. So, you know, I'm just going to go back to, I'm thinking we're going to 5,000 miles on everything. I don't think that's overkill at all. And I feel like that's going to be a good service to our clients. And hopefully you guys can take some information from this and from the Land Rover video and from the video on what's wrong with this and showing what we have to do to it to fix it. Uh, you know, and use that as, as some, you know, some information so you guys can build your own maintenance schedules and where you think it should be. So hope you guys liked the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, leave us a comment down below. We appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.